For a lot of people, the worst thing that can happen to their vehicle is they turn the key and it doesn't start. But believe it or not, that's not nearly as bad as when you turn the key and it doesn't stop. It's a condition called runaway, and it is slightly horrifying. Now I was asked to explain what diesel runaway is. Runaway is exactly what it sounds like. You want your motor to not go, but it doesn't give a shit what you want, and it continues to go faster and faster and faster until you find a way to force it to stop going, or it goes all Chernobyl. -y. It's quite spectacular. If it goes long enough, there's usually fire involved, loud noises, a big explosion, it's some point. It's exciting. But what causes it is not so straightforward. Now the reason this is most commonly associated with turbo diesels is because diesels don't require an electrical ignition source like a spark plug in a gasoline motor. They use compression ignition so the pistons when they're on their compression stroke compress the air it makes it really hot and that's enough to ignite the fuel. It's cool because older diesels didn't need any electrical components to run at all. But then to turn them off you can't just turn a key and shut off the electrical ignition source like you can on a gasoline motor. Y you gotta choke them a little bit. They're tough. They can take it. You either need to shut off the air supply supply so it can't breathe or you need to shut off the fuel supply so it has no fuel. And the majority of diesels work by just shutting off that fuel supply. But the other problem is diesels are oil burners. Diesel fuel is just a low viscosity oil. And you may have heard about people fueling their old diesels with waste motor oil or even used fryer grease. In fact, in 1893, Rudolf Diesel ran his new motor on peanut oil, which is awesome to have a motor that can run on oil uh, until you shut it off and it decides it wants to run on its own oil. And the most common way that this happens is the introduction of oil into the engine's intake through the turbocharger. Turbos need oil because they move, so they have seals that keep that oil in until they don't anymore. So then it starts just feeding itself its own motor oil at will and you've lost all control. And then eventually it eats all of its own oil and your pistons become part of the space program. But it does not always happen on a turbo diesel. It can happen on a naturally aspirated engine as well. Naturally aspirated just means that these cylinders are doing all the work to pull the air into the motor, where a turbo uses wasted energy from the exhaust gases to shove more air into the motor so you can burn more fuel and get more power, baby. But as any motor wears out, you get a thing called blow-by because you can't perfectly seal everything in the motor. And all blow-by is is vaporized motor oil that's under pressure that is getting pushed out of the crankcase of the motor. If enough of that blow-by gets pushed past the rings and the cylinders inside the motor or gets pushed into the intake or on the old supercharged two-stroke diesels, if it gets introduced into the supercharger system, there's lots of other ways that runaway can happen. Although on those old two-stroke Detroit diesels, it was hard to tell when they were ever running away because they always sounded like they're running away. I call them things screaming memes for a good goddamn reason. <laughs> anyway, getting off topic. Gas motors have lower compression, so they don't ignite oil uh, under their own pressure usually, and they rely on spark for ignition, and you can really easily just turn that off, and then there's nothing to ignite the fuel or the oil to get it to run away. But if you get a gas motor hot enough, it doesn't need spark plugs anymore, and as long as it has fuel, it will continue to run. On modern cars, it isn't as much of a problem because they've got electronic fuel injectors, and you can just shut the fuel off. But on older carbureted cars or mechanically injected cars, get that motor hot enough, and it will continue to diesel away. On the bright side, when this does happen, it's usually not the big, exciting, high-revolution catastrophe. They usually just kind of putter along annoyingly until you can get them to shut down. So so what do you do in this situation when a motor's running and uh, you don't want it to be running anymore? Well, an engine needs fuel and air to run. And if you've already shut off the fuel and it continues to run, this is one of the few times you don't need to ask for permission. You can just choke it rag over the intake usually works the best, you know, really snuff it out. I heard a fire extinguisher in the throat will do it too. Not sure I recommend that one, especially since you may need that fire extinguisher if that uh, endeavor is not successful. But yeah, just any way you can cut the air off, that's that's really the only way to do it. In fact, on a lot of older diesels, a lot of people install just a mechanical air choke, which is a good idea because then all you have to do is pull a lever and uh, a butterfly valve closes and shuts off that air supply. So there you have it. That's all it is. Now you can remember the next time when your car won't start, it could be worse. It could not stop. And, and that's a lot less fun. Uh, unless, of course, you're a spectator with no financial investment in the situation. Then it can be pretty entertaining.